Hello, my name is Alexander Cordero. Thank you for tuning into this video, Hairstyling 101 with Mini for hashtag Mini Together. In this video, I will be showing you how you can better maintain your hair at home as well as the hair of your loved ones around you since we're all under quarantine and unable to make it over to our favorite salon. In this video, I'll be covering how to cut and maintain men's hair, longer hair, as well as a demo on how to touch up your roots yourself at home um, if you have access to a hair color kit or if you're able to purchase your color yourself. This section will be talking about men's hair. So these techniques you can use on just about anybody. And then later on today, I'll be showing you how you can touch up a beard at home very simply and very clean cut. So to start off the haircut, the first step we're going to do is debulking. So for me, debulking is removing a lot of this mass of hair that's stuck along the sides. What I'd recommend to do for this is to grab your clipper and put on a big guard like a number three or a number four. I think for Claudio today, we'll start with three. What I'd recommend for you to do is just to brush out the hair. So what you'll want to do is to pick up your clipper, snap on your number three guard, you want to start at the base and slowly move the machine up. You'll notice that eventually the head starts to round. What you don't want to do is to follow the shape of the head. As soon as the head starts to round, just keep moving the clipper up. Eventually you'll end up cutting nothing and you'll come off of the head and the hair that you clipped will be off and the hair that you don't need to be messing with, which is this hair here above the round of the head, it'll stay where it needs to stay. We're just going to do a nice and clean number three all around the sides. At this point, you should have most of the bulk removed. Go through one more time and just make sure that you really have everything set down to a number three so you don't have any spots where the hair is slightly longer because you forgot about going over it the first time. We're going to go through and detail the outline of the haircut and this is what really makes it look sharp and stand out. Once you finish both sides, take another look at it and make sure it's balanced and even. So now let's move into the top section at this round of the head. So working out throughout the top, I'd recommend that you have this hair wet and sprayed down and then brushed out. So the tools you'll need for this step are your scissors and your comb. The area we're going to be focusing on is not this top part, but more so this transition between the top and the sides. So what I'd recommend doing is brushing the hair back, and here, once you have the hair brushed back, you can place the comb, hold it down with your thumb, and just glide it along this ridge and pull. That'll help you get a very clean section out for you to help start that transition between the sides, the back, and the top of the hair. So now you should have a section that's free from the sides, free from the back. What you're going to want to do is take a section from this little separation that we made you rest the head on their head with the comb as you collect the hair. And then you can just clip a straight line up. So 
So when you finish, it should look a little something like this. A lot of times when we cut hair behind the chair, we'll go through and do something we call cross-sectioning. You just want to take a look at the hair and make sure that nothing sticks out. Just going through, if anything stands out, giving it a little snip. Now for the back, we're going to do the same exact thing. So this is what the back looks like, going into the sides with the fresh outline. Now when it comes to the top, first things first is you want to have it very, very, very wet down. Going here to the top, what you can do is take a section right down the center and brush it all to the side. What I'm going to do is take a section from the top. You can see here, this is the hair that we cut previously. This is the hair that we have yet to cut. So what I'm going to do is pull everything off to the side, just like what we did with that transition area, straight to the side, and straight up. This technique blends the top area into the sides and back. But what you're left with after you split the hair down the center and brush it to the sides and cutting it, what you're left with is a long patch right down the center. So for that, I'm gonna take off almost nothing because again, Claudio likes it longer. Depending on who you have in your chair, they might want a lot more off and then you can just feel free and chop all that off. So I think that might be it for the haircut. So before I style his hair, I'm gonna go through and show you guys some tips on what you can do for your beard. So the first thing I'd recommend is for you to brush everything down and get any knots out. What I want to do is tie in this long scruffy bit with this transition here into the fresh haircut. So I'll go back in with my number three with what I started with, just maybe to the base of the ear and carry that straight up. After that, brush all this hair back in the same way that we went through and cleaned up this detail here around the hairline, you want to go through and clean this off here in the back of the beard. Moving up a guard to the number four, we're going to touch up this bulky part here. Going from shorter at the ear to longer at the chin. So the same way that when the machine started to follow the round of the head, you just kicked off and kept going straight, follow that along the beard as well. The bottom as well. You don't want to follow the shape too closely. You just want to kick off where it starts to round. Now the underneath, again, you want to be the shortest right through here at the bottom and longer at the goatee. Um, don't try to round off and go into the goatee, into the chin, just kind of kick off through there. So this is the number four again, where the face starts to round, I'm just going to kick off. So here on the underneath, what you want to do is just create a bit of a shape and this will add to their jawline. And then one of the last few things we're going to do, just like with the haircut, is you want to detail the outline. For the mustache, brush it out. I like to flip the comb over and use the comb as a guide. So going right up like this, trim away any little weird guys that are just kind of hanging out. Cleans them up. And then on the actual beard itself, there might be some stragglers, some long hairs. 
you can go through and just freehand shape the fluff out. And then these little hairs here that are left up on the cheeks, you can go through and use a razor for that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this machine here because Claudia doesn't really have a lot of irritation from this machine. Now. Um, so here I finished a very quick and simple to follow men's haircut. I also did a little bit of beard work. I'm going to walk Claudio over to the sinks and give him a nice shampoo. I'll bring him back with his hair diffused and curly and you guys can see the finished look. So here I'm going to go through and style Claudio's hair. I'm going to use a little bit of a leave-in conditioner. Leave-in conditioners just add some moisture to your hair that is lost throughout the day. So I'm going to massage a little bit of that in. My actual styling, styling product is Easy Rider from Kevin Murphy. It's nice just to add a little bit more shape to curly hair. You can also use a mousse, you can use gel. And when you dry it, you can either let it air dry. I'm going to go through and use a diffuser. Here you can see that I'll be using it on low pressure with medium heat. All right. I'll give a little 360 here for us to check out the haircut. Very simple to do. We only used one guard at number three all the way around. Detailed around the ear, into the neckline. Rounded off the top just a little bit, just so it's not so poofy. Kept some extra length at the front so the curls look fresh. And then we went through in the beard and just cleaned everything up so it's nice and tight. Very professional. All right. When it comes to cutting hair, you need to approach it differently depending on the canvas. If you have curly hair, I would suggest either straightening it or wearing your hair wet before you start to follow the steps that I will show you. And the reason why I say that is because curly hair is bouncy and it shrinks. If you're going to be following these techniques while your hair is already dry and curled and set, it might be a little bit difficult because my technique involves manipulating hair ties and tying hair ties around curly hair. It might not tie properly. You might have some hairs that are shrinking and some hairs that are stretched. It's, it won't be quite accurate to the haircut. So I'd suggest either straightening it or working with your hair being wet. That way at least once you brush it, it'll be mostly smooth and you can secure it on the bottom with a hair tie. If your hair is wavy to already smooth, I'd suggest either just getting a blow dryer through it, smoothing everything down, um, or straightening it or wearing it wet. I just wanted to clarify that you know, I do understand the difference between curly hair and smoother hair. It is tricky to cut your hair. In general, it is probably more difficult to cut your own hair being curly yourself. So I'd suggest either have someone apply these techniques onto your hair, or if you're applying these techniques on your own, have it wet and smooth or straight if you're curly, and if you have straighter hair, wear it straight. So I have my model here and I've gone ahead and sectioned out the top of her head with an elastic band. So following this, what I'm going to do now is section out two hair ties, one for each side of the front, and then again two hair ties, one for each side in the back. What you want to do is have as close to the head as possible. And the reason why you want to keep an eye on how close it is to the head is because you want this to be controlled, you want it to be neat, you want it to be nice and smooth and as tight to the head as possible. So that when you let go, it still stays close to the head. So I'll spring around here so you can see my section. All right, it's just about behind the ear. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more on this side of the head, as well as two throughout the back. So now that we're sectioned out, I just want to point out a few pointers for different lengths of hair. On 
my model here, her hair is already above shoulder. There's almost not much to tie up in the back here. It's very, very stubby, very short, which is fine. The technique still works for this length of hair. If your hair is longer, if it's similar to mine, you have a little bit more options available and afforded to you. If you like for your hair to come more into a V shape at the back where it's longer between the, the shoulder blades and a little bit shorter around the face, what I would recommend is instead of having four hair ties, is just having two. Having both halves of the head come together into one tie. So you'd have this front section and back section sitting in one around the front, and this back section and this front section sitting in another one around the front. You can even brush your hair down, collect all of it, and tie it nice and tight right through here. Um, having it into fours allows for you to have a bit more of a square where it's just straight all the way through, which for this model would have worked perfectly because that's just following along what her previous haircut was. So that being said, this top section here, we're going to put one last elastic just around the ends. All right, so now your hair should look like this, a little ridiculous, but perfectly sectioned and controlled. On to cutting. Now that you have everything tied, you could just brush through the ends just to make sure there's no snaggles just kind of grabbing and pulling. Hold this and cut about one finger's worth from the bottom. You don't want to go and cut off all of this hair because then that would contribute to a very large change in the hairstyle. We're just looking to maintain what's already there. So you can go through and take off just one finger's worth from the bottom. Nice and clean, nice and straight. Here as well. All right, so this part of the haircut is complete. This is for the length. What you want to do before you do anything else is to check the balance of the haircut. So what you want to make sure is that the front is in balance with the back, nothing looks long or odd or protruding. And I think I did a pretty good job with this one. This top section, we have it out of the way because it'll be our layers. This is something to keep in mind. If in your haircut right now you have no layering or you're not a fan of the layers you already have, you probably don't want to put more layering in there, you just want to grow it out. What I'd recommend is instead of having this section here at all, is just including it into your four ponytails. Now if your hair has some layers or if you would like to include some layers, go ahead and section out the top just as you see here. One elastic along the base and one a little bit higher up. And what you want to do here is take off a little bit at a time. Visually assess what you're looking at, try to find out where the most split ends are, and just kind of draw, I wouldn't say a clean line, but a kind of a jaggedy line, just so there's a little bit more softness. So what I'm looking at here is taking off about this much from the top. So brush it through, make sure it's nice and clean. I don't want it to be very blunt, I want it to be nice and soft. So I'll just go through, holding my scissors at a bit of an angle, cutting into it. And if you're asking Alex how much do I cut off, that's all, you judge that based off of visually how many split ends you see. If there's a lot of split ends, you might need to cut off more. If there's not as much, you don't need to cut off that much. It's really just to spruce up the ends and just to tie everything together so it feels nice and soft. So for full bangs, what I recommend, a big no-no that I've seen a lot of people do online is hold down, that was a little aggressive, hold down the hair, cutting that straight line, and then when they let go, they get this gorgeous little umbrella happening and they've ruined their hair for the next, I don't mean, oh, too, too long, too long. So what I'd recommend to do instead is instead of pressing down on the hair with your hand, is just to gently hold it in place with the wide tooth end of your comb. 
blow dry everything down first. This is something that all, you know, fringe girls, bang girls know, is you blow dry everything down. Have your bangs sectioned. Clip these dudes out of the way. And what you want to do is just hold the comb here, not really smoothing the hair and holding it down because that would give you the same effect as pressing it with your hand. You just want to hold it in place with the comb and carefully and gently draw through that line with the scissors. So that's how I would recommend cutting your hair at home. Take your time, don't rush it through and have a little bit of patience because doing anything on yourself takes a lot out of yourself. Whereas doing something on someone else, you have like this bird's eye view, you can walk around them, and it's a little bit easier. So just keep that in mind when you're approaching this. I'm maintaining my haircut, I'm not changing my haircut. All right, in this section of the video, I will be showing you how you can do a root touch-up by yourself at home. You'll need your color and your activator, your peroxide. Some other things I recommend having is a towel, around your neck to keep things clean, gloves, as well as an apron to keep your clothes from getting dirty. You can also use an old t-shirt that you don't mind having stained. I have a comb. This is just a regular tail comb. Um, this is basing cream. Basing cream we use around the hairline to prevent stains from happening. You can also use a heavy lotion or Vaseline. I have a brush, a whisk, and then I have two bowls. One is for you to mix the color into with the activator. This container is for you to apply, is for you to put everything that you've mixed to then apply onto your hair. It's just to keep yourself organized. If you're purchasing these things yourself, either from Amazon or from a drugstore product over the shelf. Everything is already pre-mixed for you. So here I have everything mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio right down to the numbers with my scale. What I'd recommend you do after is section your hair off of the face. Once you have all the hair brushed and off the face, clip it, get it out of the way, grab some of your basing cream, your heavy moisturizer, your Vaseline, and very generously apply this all around the hairline. So once your hairline is covered and protected, I also recommend using a little bit right along the ear, right through here, and even right behind the ear and on top of the ear. When we begin the application, make sure the hair is nice and neat. Brush everything right out of the way, and with your brush, load it up with some product, hold your hair out of the way, and apply just onto the grays. And right about behind the ear where I can't really see anymore, I'm going to pick all this up, twist it out of the way, and applying it along the hairline. So you go through, you trace your hairline on both sides, separate the hair down the center, and we're gonna start on the, on the right side first. So on the right side here, divide the front from the back, just so it's easier for you to manipulate the hair. You don't want to be holding too much hair at one go. So now we have the hair that we're working with here in our hands. For you to apply color accurately, you want to be using small sections. So what I like to do is to brush the hair out into my hands, using the back of the brush where there's the tail, or as well as the back of the comb, grab a section that is not too wide to be working with. The top, I'll keep it out of the way. On yourself, you would have your hand rested on your head, holding the hair, with this hair falling here below. You can go ahead, grab a little bit of color, 
apply on the below section, apply on the top section. Go through, grab another section here, drop it down. At this point, I recommend retracing the hairline. So around the hairline, I'll just hold it back a little bit, resaturate that hairline nice and thick. What I recommend doing now is going through with a tissue, and with this, I just clean up right around the hairline. You just don't want that color sitting on your face because then it will color your face. Everything that you've done to this right side here, you repeat it over to the left. Most color have a range of between 30 and 45 minutes of processing time. That means once you've applied everywhere, you wait your 30 to 45 minutes. 30 if your hair isn't as stubborn to be covered, 45 if it's very stubborn grays that need to be covered. After your 30 to 45 minute wait, go ahead, wash your hair with any shampoo, color safe preferred, sulfate free. Nice, rigorous scraping. You don't want um, any residue color to be stuck on the scalp because again, this is an alkaline product. Alkalinity does lead to sensitivity and irritation. So go through, do a nice exfoliation at the scalp, wash it through. This is a great opportunity for you to go ahead and do a hair mask on your mid shaft and ends, or use a deep conditioner, or just a regular conditioner, brush it through your hair. And when you come out of the shower and you have everything styled, you won't have any more grays.